Hello friends, welcome to the second part of the video of Atomic Spectroscopy. In this part, we are going to discuss the flame emission spectroscopy or you may say the flame photometer which is the instrument working on the concept of flame emission spectroscopy. Before we go further, I would like to request you to watch the first part of the video, the link for which is given below in the description. To revise, what we did in the first part of the video is that each atom has its own energy level and each atom can absorb light to go to the excited state and from the excited state it may come back to the ground state and when it is coming back to the ground state the excess of energy is released in the form of a characteristic radiation. When we say characteristic radiation, that means each atom will emit a light of a particular frequency as given here delta E is equal to h mu where mu is equal to frequency. That means each atom emits a light of a particular wavelength which is characteristic to it. So let us start with the today's topic that is the flame emission spectroscopy abbreviated as FES. The concept which underlines the principle in flame emission spectroscopy is the atomization of the sample. Flame emission spectroscopy requires a high temperature flame because in the flame the atomization of sample take place. After the atomization the sample is able to emit the light. Let us see the atomization of the sample as shown here in the diagram. Mx here is a general example for a salt where M is a metal and X is its salts. For example, M can be a potassium and X can be chlorine. So chloride salt of potassium. Flame photometry requires salt in the solution form which is nebulized into the flame. After reaching to the flame, this solution is converted into smaller water droplets which are known as the mist. In the flame further, this mist is evaporated to the solid state that is the solvent in which the salt was dissolved get evaporated. The solid salt is then vaporized to the gaseous state. The heating continues and final step occur here where the bond between the metal and the salt is broken and the metal and the salt gets separated. The salt is now in the atomic form. In the atomic form, the atom absorbs the energy from the flame and goes to the excited state. And from this excited state, it comes back to the ground state. While coming back to the ground state, it will emit the characteristic radiation. So that's the importance of the atomization of sample. It is here where the salt is converted into atom and it is here where the atom emits the light which is studied under the term spectroscopy. This is the schematic diagram of flame photometer as said which works on the principle of flame emission spectroscopy. Seen in the diagram is the burner which is the important component of the flame photometer. The burner is attached to the sample solution. The sample solution reaches to the flame and then the further steps take place. The other components which can be seen is the mirror, the monochromator, the photocell, amplifier and recorder. Let us discuss some of the components. The most important component as said is burner where the atomization of sample take place. Hence burner is also known as the atomizer. The examples of burners are total consumption burner and premix or laminar flow burner. There is another burner which is a non-flame atomizer known as the graphite furnace or electrothermal atomizer. That means this burner doesn't have flame in it. So these are the three burners. We will not discuss this burner in detail. They may require uh, another video to understand. But we will see the diagrams for each burners. 
in short the first burner total consumption burner has three channel the capillary through which sample enters the fuel the oxidizer all these three combination meet in the flame directly the next is the premix type of burner where first the fuel the oxidizer and the sample get premixed and then reach the burner the third burner is the graphite furnace it has the graphite rod which are electrically heated the sample enters through the window and this burner works in three stages coming back to the earlier burners they are having the combination of oxidizer gas and the fuel gas it is because the atomization require a very high temperature approximately 3000 degree celsius so the combination of fuel along with oxidizer gas can produce a high temperature flame flame photometry has one limitation that is it is a temperature dependent technique in emission spectroscopy the atom in excited state is responsible for the emission as you can see in the boltzmann equation here the ratio of metal in excited state to the ground state is dependent on the temperature of the flame higher the temperature more is the number of atom in the excited state hence we can prove that the flame photometry is a temperature dependent technique and you also see that in burner we use the fuel and oxidizer gas combination just to achieve the higher temperature coming back to the instrumentation in the burner when the sample get atomized and it start emitting light the light falls onto the mirror which is reflected back to the monochromator the monochromator is also known as the filter as seen in the diagram this monochromators are capable of resolving a light into its component through which they are able to filter unwanted light radiation here in the flame emission spectroscopy the purpose of using filters is to allow only the characteristic radiation coming from the sample and filter of the unwanted light the next component is the photocell since the light emitted is in the form of photons that is light radiation it has to be converted into the electrical signal so that it can be measured by the recorder photocell is the device which converts the light radiation into equal amount of electrical signal a photocell contains materials which are photosensitive in nature when light photons fall on those material they release equal amount of electrons this is how the light signal is converted into electrical signals then once the light energy is converted into electrical energy it may pass through amplifier to amplify the signal and then finally reaches to the recorder where the intensity of emitted light is recorded a recorder can be a simple component like your galvanometer which shows deflection in presence of electrical signal recorders the measurements shown on the recorder are used for the quantitative analysis basically flame photometer is used for the quantitative analysis when the sample is present in a higher amount the intensity of the emitted light is higher and if the sample concentration is lower the intensity of the emitted light will be also lower the quantitative methods which can be used are calibration curve method standard addition method and internal standard method the graphs are shown respectively where the y axis is the emission intensity this methods are used for the quantitative analysis flame emission spectroscopy also has application in qualitative analysis how we can perform qualitative analysis using flame emission spectroscopy if you remember this image where we have seen different atom are imparting different color to the flame it is because each atom can emit its own characteristic radiation by measuring this characteristic radiation in terms of their wavelength we can find out which atom is emitting this radiation on the basis of their wavelength so in this manner 
flame emission spectroscopy which is nothing but a atomic spectroscopy is used for the qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis the next part in the atomic spectroscopy is the absorption spectroscopy atomic absorption spectroscopy the link is given below in the description you can watch that video thank you